Hi there, I'm John from Essex Wildlife Trust. And I'm Harriet. This week we're going to be making a mini wildlife pond in our garden. Now like you, we're in lockdown, so we're just going to be using the bits and bolts that we've managed to uh, scrounge from around the garden. Um, if you don't have a garden, don't have much space, then equally a mini pond can be created in tubs or any sort of container where you've got room to create it in a bit of sunlight. Now if you were going to do one thing in your garden for wildlife, then a pond is one of the best things that you can do. It supports a range of creatures and a range of habitats and will really attract wildlife to your garden and be really beneficial. These are a few of the things that you will need to make your mini wildlife pond. We've got a fork and a spade, uh, a spirit level, and then we've got our containers. So you could use a truck or a bucket or any suitable container that holds water. We're going to be using the butler sink that's just to Harriet's left. It's a bit heavy for her to pick up. You'll <laughs> also need some stones or rocks to put in your pond. Ideally if you've got some, some uh, pond plants, but we don't have any of those at the moment. Next you want to choose a spot. Your pond will want plenty of light, but not full sunlight all day. It's better for wildlife if you put the pond in a warm, sunny area. Tadpoles, dragonflies, plants will thrive in these conditions. We've chosen our spot in front of the trough, which captures the rainwater from the shed. Now the trough's good for insects, but it's rather high off the ground and it's got really steep sides, so it's not great for amphibians and reptiles, so we're going to put our mini wildlife pond next to that. Now we've marked out where we want to put our mini wildlife pond. Uh, next thing to do is dig out the hole. Fern, dig! Come on! Get down! I'm not sure that's going to work, Harriet. I think we might have to do that ourselves. <laughs> Is it ready? Now we've got the sink in, we want to check its level so that the water doesn't drain out once we uh, fill it. Looks perfect this way. Yep, just about. Perfect. So we're all good. Yep. Next we'll fill in round the ponds. Uh, make sure it's nice and stable. Next we want to add some gravel and rocks to the bottom of the pond to create lots of niches for wildlife. If your container is deeper, you want to use some rocks and stones or logs to create a range of different depths and also a slope for creatures to climb in and out safely. If your container isn't sunk into the ground and not too tall, you can also create a ramp on the outside of going down to the ground. We've got a couple of bigger rocks as well that we're going to put around the edge. You could also create a log pile nearby. Anything to create those little habitat niches and hibernaculums. Now's the time where you'd put in any plants if you had them. We haven't got them so the next thing to do is to put in some water. Now if you've got it, it's much, much better to put in rainwater rather than tap water because tap water contains chemicals. If you have to use tap water, then let it settle for a couple of days. This is just some rainwater we've collected in water butts. Certainly been plenty of rain over the winter. 
For now, it's best just to fill your ponds. Don't be tempted to introduce any frog spawn or toad spawn, as you can bring in diseases and other pests with that. Well, there you have it, your finished wildlife pond. I hope you enjoyed our video. Yeah, we'd love to see your little wildlife pond creations. If you want more ideas of actions you can take, then check out the website. Until next time, stay safe. And stay wild, and get out in your garden. Bye bye. That's right, Fern. We need a plug. <laughs>